Awesome. Welcome to Big Red Barrel, and I'm here with Tim Schaefer at the BAFTA Gaming Awards. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, so you've been uh, hosting a lot of awards tonight. I was wondering, how do you feel about an event like this? Do you feel indie truly means what it meant five years ago? Well, it's always, you know, that's a good question. Like, what does indie mean? Because if you look at it in terms of ownership of a company, there's some companies that are independently held that don't make games you think of as indie, and there's some games that are really, really indie looking that are actually owned by big companies. So it's, I think it's more about the spirit of the game and a spirit about making a game that doesn't really conform to the big machine that makes popular entertainment. You know, like making something outside of all that pressure and a really unique and personal vision. That's what I think. Like a, a game like Hohokam, which is, you know, attached to Sony, which is a big company, but if you look at it, it's like, it's obviously just a personal vision of a couple of people. And um, that's, that's, I think, what's really important about being indie. Do you think that things like Idea Xbox, who have brought 22 games to this event tonight, EGX Res, um, do you think they have changed the face of indie at the moment? I think it's a great sign of um, how the big players like uh, Microsoft and Sony and, and, and Nintendo are all paying attention to indies now. Obviously, there's a reason for that. You know, they're, they want to um, participate in that. And I think it's just a sign that indie games have really arrived and they're part of the, the big industry. And I think it's great to have both types of games, AAA games like Shadow of Mordor, which I played the heck out of, and uh, and indie games adding a different kind of voice to it, all goes into uh, making games that inspire the next generation of game makers to make even better games. Um, speaking of inspiring the next generation, how do you feel your games and your legacy, such as um, Monkey Island and Grim Fantango, which was recently re-released, how do you feel that they have really shaped modern um, point-and-click and general gaming? I don't... Uh, that's a good question. Have they shaped... I don't know if they shaped anything. Do you think they shaped anything? Um, well, things like um, Sam and Max and some of the more modern point and clicks, such as the Telltale games like Borderlands and Walking Dead, they surely must have taken some inspiration from your original point and click style. Maybe. That's good. I may, uh, that's great to think that. Um, I mean, I hope just, you know, we've always, ever since I started Lucas, there was always an emphasis on, uh, like, the quality of the story and the quality of the characters. And it really spoke to my desire. I think that the core thing that really keeps me going in games is the desire to make worlds for people to get sucked into, like fantasy worlds of all different types that make people get pulled in and want to like live there for a little while. And plus exposing, and like d d digging into those worlds through the eyes of characters who have real lives in those worlds and what you can learn from that when you're playing a game in the same way that when you read a great book or watch a great movie, like that you're enriched by that somehow. So, Question? I think I just started <laughs> rambling for like a long time. But, oh no, that's absolutely fine. But um, yeah, like games like your uh, new game Broken Age has two completely different stories which end up interlinking and really... Spoilers. Really interlinking and... Or they don't. We don't know. I don't know. Uh, but really draw people into the characterization. How do you feel that um, the modern um, audience will uh, latch onto that in a greater scheme of things? I mean, I'm, I'm excited about how... Uh, I don't know because there are new people playing games all the time. And back in the old days, we would always think of adventure games as appealing to... I mean, it seems weird to say that, but people would always come up and be like, your game is the only game I can get my girlfriend to play with me. And that's often, we, you know, for better for worse, we hear that a lot. And I think that's great, the idea that a game would appeal to someone who's not currently playing games, and that's the only game they'll play. You know, the more people, we, the more perspectives we bring, then the more rich and diverse games will be. Um, and so, it, now tell me again the question. I, I just keep rambling. And then I, um, do you feel like your games in general, from Monkey Island to Grim Fandango to Broken Age, are kind of gateway games? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to be the gateway drug for gaming, <laughs> to bring people in don't think they like a game they because get me into it. well that's awesome because yeah. I think I think people who maybe think a lot of people think games are a waste of time or they're just there's something they're about like things they don't care about but they see that they have story and characters then they feel like it, it's not a waste of time that it's an, that it's a it's an artistic you're, you're experiencing someone else's creative uh, expression and it's always that's always a great thing to interact with and uh, one final question um, how do you feel like games like brutal legend um, diverge from the path of your point-and-click games? Because I absolutely love Brutal Legend. It's one of my favorite games. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, um, 
it, it's, it's, it's very different in that there's a lot of hacking, slashing, and decapitation and heavy metal in it. But it's also really similar in that there, I've always had hot rods and, and big demons with giant tongues in like Glottis, you know, and, and full throttle. Like I've always explored, I always really love, grew up loving heavy metal and I love demons. Is that weird to say? I love demons. Oh, no, I, I love demons and I love myself too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so it's really, it's similar to all the other games in that it's a real personal expression. I mean, I got to uh, exercise some like childhood fantasies to like, I mean, I got to meet Ozzy Osbourne and, like, and just do all these crazy things. Like the game was really, really personal. So I think it fits in with all the other games in that same way. Thank you so much.